Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the 28th of the ninth month on our Creator's calendar as we reckon it according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, which happens to line up with December 9th, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar. And we are continuing in our segue from going through the book of Genesis or Bereshit and our second part of covering who we should listen to and how to determine the truth of what's in his word. So I highly encourage everyone to read or to go back and check out the first video from last week on that one. I'll put a link in the description for it here, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So continuing with what we were reading, this is Colossians chapter 1, 9 through 29. It says, That is also why we, from the day we heard, have not ceased praying for you and asking that you be filled with the knowledge of his desire in all chokmah and ruachi. Sorry. It should be ruach ni. Sorry about that. Chokmah, chokmah is wisdom. That word, chok, is the palate of your mouth. Ma is what? Like, what is it? Mana, what, what is it, right? But ma is what, and it's to taste what is good for you. Essentially, that's what wisdom is. Hoke is literally the palate of your mouth, the top or the roof of your mouth. And it's also when a mother would chew a date and put that paste on the roof of a baby's mouth to have them taste and wean them off of milk so they can taste what's good for them. That is what hokma represents, to be able to taste and determine what is good. Okay, knowledge, simply put, is truth in your mind. With those things, please keep that in mind. And here we go. It says, that is also why we, from the day we heard, have not ceased praying for you and asking that you be filled with the knowledge of his desire in all chokma and spiritual comprehension to walk worthily of Yahuwah, pleasing all, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Elohim, being empowered with all power according to the might of his esteem, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has made us fit to share in the inheritance of the Kodeshim in the light, who has delivered us from the authority of darkness and transferred us into the reign of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, who is the likeness of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of all creation, because in Him, our Mashiach, were created all that are in the Shamayim and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or rulerships or principalities or authorities, all have been created through him and for him. And he is before all, and in him all hold together. In another place, it talks about we are held together by the word of his power. This is proven scientifically. Uh, People have an idea about atoms and, and things of that nature, but I would like to encourage everyone to look into the origins of atomic theory. It literally comes from Greek philosophy, men making up what felt good in their minds. It was refuted 2,000 years ago by Kepha in the recognitions of Clement. Scripture makes clear that we everything is held together by his word. And we literally have proven through science that everything has its own frequency. You can tamper with that frequency, oscillate it and make it reverberate in itself and completely destroy or cause to implode the created thing. Royal Redmond Rife did that with cancers, ulcers, and other things in the body using light and frequency back in the 1930s. So these are things that have been known and hidden but proven in his word. So moving on, it says, And he is the head of the body, the assembly who is the beginning, 
the firstborn from the dead, that he might become the one who is first in all, because in him all the completeness was well pleased to dwell, and through him to completely restore to favor all unto himself, whether on earth or in the Shemaim, having made shalom through the blood of his stake. And you, who were once estranged and enemies in the mind by wicked works, but now he has completely restored to favor in the body of his flesh through death to present you set apart. So before you were estranged by wicked works, but because he died, you can be presented set apart, blameless and unreprovable. Right? If you continue in the belief, which means doing, right? Amuna is trust, trustworthiness. It's faith and faithfulness. It's belief and trust and, and doing, right? Founded and steadfast and are not moved away from the expectation of the Besora which you heard, which was proclaimed to every creature under the Shamayim, of which I, Shaul, became a servant who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in Mashiach's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the assembly of which I became a servant according to the administration of Elohim, which was given to me for you to fill the word of Elohim, the secret which has been hidden from ages and from generations but now has been revealed to his Kodeshim, to whom Elohim desired to make known what are the riches of the esteem of this secret among the nations, which is Mashiach in you, the expectancy or the hope of esteem. If you guys remember, or for anyone that doesn't know, Mashiach as a word is very interesting. But mush, like mush mush, is touchable or touchy filly, what we get mushy from in English, right? She is a gift or present. The yach, right, is his working hand, and literally the chayth is a, a wall or an embodiment, a container. So you can say it's the touchable, fillable communication, which is shiach, right? It is the word made flesh. It is the means of a communication and discourse. It is literally his gift, which is his working hand contained. All of that is literally in the word Mashiach. And when you know that, it's why I actually use that instead of saying Messiah or something else. It's not to be, I'm not trying to be peculiar or weird or anything or saying, you well, you have to say things like this or, or anything like that. But the point it is very meaningful to me. So when you hear Mashiach in you, that's his gift, his means of communication. It, that There's so much into that word, and I just wanted to have you be familiar with that. If you want to see that for yourself, just look up those letters. I, uh, If you look up Ernest Klein's Etymological Dictionary for of the Hebrew language for readers of English, that's the best source I have. It's what I use the most, but you can also use the Strong's Concordance. Just make sure you flip through and check every definition for those words. Break down the letters and look at them, and then you get a sense of what I'm talking about. It says, which is Mashiach in you, the expectancy of esteem, whom we announce, warning every man and teaching every man in all hokma." in order to present every man perfect in Mashiach Yahushua, for which I also labor, striving according to the working of him who works in me in power. 1 Corinthians 1, 21-31 For since in the Hokmah of Elohim, the world through wisdom did not know Elohim, it pleased Elohim through the foolishness of preaching, to deliver those who believe. And since Yahudim ask a sign and Greeks seek wisdom, yet we proclaim Mashiach impaled, to the Yahudim a stumbling block, 
and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, both Yahudim and Greeks, Mashiach, the power of Elohim and the Hokma of Elohim. For the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men, and the weakness of Elohim is stronger than men. For look at your calling, brothers, that there are not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. But Elohim has chosen the foolish of the world to put to shame the wise. Right? He, no doctorates, no degrees, no, no decades of education and accolades amongst the world. That stuff impedes your ability to comprehend the truth like a child. And Elohim has chosen the weak of the world to put to shame the strong. And Elohim has chosen the low-born of the world and the despised and the ones that are not, that he might bring to naught the ones that are, so that no flesh should boast in his presence. And of him you are in Mashiach Yahushua, who became for us hokma from Elohim, righteousness also, and set apartness and redemption that as it is written, he who boasts, let him boast in Yahuwah. Now you see, right here he says, let him boast in Yahuwah, but he's talking about our Mashiach, because our Mashiach is literally named the Father's name, which we've covered before. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 16. It says, And when I came to you, brothers... I did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom, proclaiming to you the witness of Elohim. For I resolved not to know anything among you, except Yahushua Mashiach and him impaled. Which is what we read last time when he said, I've written this to you so that you learn not to think beyond what is written. We're not to go beyond his words to determine what is true, exactly what Kef has said. And that's why if we do that, we'll be on the truth. When we don't do that, when we hold to something else, that's when we get perverted from the truth. And that's why he says, what do you have that you didn't receive? And if you have received it, why do you boast as if you haven't received it? Trying to get us to check ourselves. Is the information we received, is it all from what he said and how he determined to comprehend it? Or are we adding something to that, right? We're not to bring, the, we're not to bring things of ourselves. Just establish the facts as written and stand on the truth. And this is why he came and suffered the things he condescended in himself to make the truth known. He says, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my word and my preaching were not with pervasive words of man's wisdom or persuasive words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Ruach and of power. That's the important thing. They didn't preach trying to persuade men with, with intellectual arguments. They spoke simple, plain truth, and then his their words were proven by the manifestation of his power on them, healing the sick, raising the dead, all the miracles. It says, in order that your belief should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Elohim. Yet we speak hokma among those who are perfect, who are innocent or blameless, and not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age that are being brought to naught. But we speak the hokma of Elohim, which was hidden in a secret, and which Elohim ordained before the ages for our esteem, which no one of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known, they would not have impaled Yahuwah Kavod, or Yahuwah of esteem. But as it has been written, eye has not seen, and ear is not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man what Elohim has prepared for those who love him. And this is what I was telling you, that Yahuwah of esteem is a code name, just like the man in Lenin, right? 
but it's a code name for our Mashiach. Whenever you see Yahuwah Kabod there, that is almost always directly talking about him. And it's usually associated with the man in Lenin and then doing things as well. <clears throat> Although you see the esteem of Yahuwah around him as like the color of the rainbow covenant. It says, yet Elohim has revealed them to us through his Ruach, for the Ruach searches all, even the depths of Elohim. For who knows men, or sorry, for who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the Ruach of the man that is in him? So also the thoughts of Elohim no one has known except the Ruach of Elohim. And we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Ruach that is from Elohim, in order to know what Elohim has favorably given us, which we also speak, not in words in man's wisdom, or not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the set apart Ruach teaches, comparing Ruachni or spiritual with spiritual. Yet the natural man does not receive that of the Ruach of Elohim, for they are foolishness to him, and he is unable to know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual discerns indeed all, but he himself is discerned by no one. For who has known the mind of Yahuwah, who shall instruct him? Yet we have the mind of Mashiach. This is very simple, and there's two things I really gain from this from a personal perspective. I cannot know what someone else is thinking unless I ask them and they directly tell me. I, that's really helped me to stop being presumptuous or projecting my own thoughts onto others. And then, and I, this is what I say I do. I try to live this way. I am not perfect, but these are what I determined from these scriptures to do. The other one is that we can only go to his word to determine his will. Because he says his Ruach searches all, even the depths of Elohim. And our Mashiach makes it very clear that the Ruach will lead you into all truth, and his word is the truth. It is every word from the mouth of Elohim that we are to live by. And it is the Ruach that is, or it's his word that is Ruach and life. So continuing here, this is Romans 8, 3 through 14. For the Torah being powerless in that it was weak through the flesh, meaning we sin, and it was the one who does it will live by it, okay? Elohim having sent his own son in the likeness of flesh of sin and concerning sin condemned sin in the flesh, meaning he was perfect, so that, right, so that the righteousness of the Torah should be completed in us who do not walk according to the flesh or carnally, but according to the Ruach, being born again, renewed. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on that of the flesh, but those who live according to the Ruach, that of the Ruach. Before we continue real quick, I'm sorry. I highlighted this because natural man. I wanted to mention something significant. This natural man is the one that's unable to receive the things of the Ruach of Elohim. And we don't want to be that one. However, as we read before, and we'll see it again as we go through these scriptures, men, through the instigations of the adversary, who is a contriver, a deceiver, one who likes to trip people up with their words, they use what they call hocus pocus or hidden meaning of words, occult word meanings, right? To define things and get people to be tripped up. One of them is in what they call themselves. They actually have uh, what is defined as human or human being legally as the natural man of scripture. They don't really tell you that, but 
they call everyone a human. They say, oh, we're all human. They have human this, human that. And they get you to agree with it. When you'll never find that word anywhere in scripture. He made man and woman. And they are the people of Elohim. Who are, these are titles that are legitimate. Man, woman, people. But human is never used. So the adversary takes a thing that was never given from above and makes his own perversion of it. That kind of thing you find all over the place where they'll twist things or they'll have stuff with hidden meanings that we just don't know about. To anything that's not done in consent is fraud. So you don't have to be, you don't have to be worried that, oh no, I'm going to be tripped up in the things I'm doing. But you want to conform yourself as best you can to the truth. So say the words that he uses. Define yourself as the, the word defines you. And then you won't go far from what's right. That's the whole point there. All right, so continuing here, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on that of the flesh, but those who live according to the Ruach, that of the Ruach. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Ruach is life and shalom. Because the mind of the flesh is enmity towards Elohim and does not subject itself to the Torah of Elohim, neither indeed is it able. And those who are in the flesh are unable to please Elohim. Yet, and these are those that are carnal, that do the works of the flesh. The Dead Sea Scrolls would define this as the those that partake of the Ruach of the Prince of Darkness as opposed to the Ruach of the Prince of Light. Malki Rasha would be their leader instead of Melchizedek, the king of evil instead of the king of righteousness. Yet you are not in the flesh, but in the Ruach, if indeed the Ruach of Elohim dwells in you. And if anyone does not have the Ruach of Mashiach, this one is not his so if you're not showing his fruits the manifestations of the ruach you're showing that you're not belonging to him these are things that we i'm not pointing fingers and trying to condemn anyone the purpose is self-reflection you have to you have to be mindful of what you're doing and if you're not walking in the fruits of of what he said is right then you got to be mindful that you're outside of his jurisdiction. You got to repent. Okay. It says, this one is not his. And if Mashiach is in you, the body is truly dead on account of sin. But the Ruach is life on account of righteousness. And if the Ruach of him who raised Yahushua from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Mashiach from the dead shall also give life to your mortal bodies through his Ruach dwelling in you. So then, brothers, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if you live, or but if by the Ruach you put to death, sorry, but if by the Ruach you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Ruach of Elohim, these are the sons of Elohim. Matith Yahu, eleven twenty five through thirty. Says at that time, Yahushua responding said, "I thank you, Father, Master of the Shamayim and Aretz or Earth, because you have hidden these from clever and learned ones and have revealed them to babes. Yes, Father, because it was so well pleasing in your sight. All have been handed over to me by my Father." And no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and he to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I shall give you rest. Those are the ones that labor in the, in the original covenant with the added bonds that were required, the mandatory cleansings, the mandatory sacrifices, the perpetual 
washings and watching for certain things. Um, all of it was instituted as a trainer to teach spiritual things. And those are explained through the course of time in other ways. So I don't want to get too into it, but just want to say those who labor and then those who are burdened, the ones that are burdened with sins. And I shall give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your inner beings. For my yoke is gentle, and my burden is light. And this is light as in not heavy. Okay. Yoke right here, and I can't tell you that this is the word in Hebrew, but I was just reminded. The word for upon, like you say El Elyon for El Most High. That Elyon means like the abovest, if you will. To be El, like Al, I, yeah, Al, Ayin, sorry, Lamed, is to be above, upon, against. And then it also means to be yoked to. You'll find these different meanings, quote unquote, throughout different Strong's numbers. But the words, the, the spelling is the same. The letters are the same. It's essentially the inherent meaning. And the one who is most high has all things yoked to him. That That is like the picture there, where all authority is given to our Mashiach. And he's saying, take my yoke upon you. He was the one that was brought above all at the right hand of the Father. So there's that picture there. And I was trying to show that. I was just reminded here because I had mentioned the other day where the darkness in the bare sheet was yoked to the face of the deep. And someone said, well, that means upon or above. Where do you get yoked from? And I forgot that it's just a click of a button away, but people don't always see that. It's not the same Strong's number, but it's the same spelling. They might pronounce it differently. The thing about the Masoretic text, though, it was quoted as being the most comprehensive commentary of the scriptures ever written, because every single letter has someone's opinion attached to it. And that was attesting to the fact that they can change the meanings of words with vowel points. That was not always done, but we have absolute evidence that that was done on occasion almost always to hide some manifestation of our Mashiach's truth in the original covenant writings. But back on point, to be above and to be yoked together is seen in our Mashiach right here. He was put in the right hand of the Father who is the Most High, and he's telling you right here, who the one who is above us, right, in authority, to take my yoke upon you. The one who is yoked to a, a younger one, generally learns from the elder. That's the whole point. And this is what he came to walk out for us so that we can imitate him and follow him. Same picture there. <clears throat> so he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is gentle and my burden is light. Mishli or Proverbs 8, 1 through 36. This in particular, is talking about Hokmah. We know that the Hokmah, as mentioned as a woman here, is the Ruach. And the Ruach is the voice or the, the words that come from our Mashiach's mouth. Just as he is the word from the bosom of the Father, the Ruach is the word that he speaks. Just as he is the living word through which all things were made and held together. So what he says is, well, Ob willing, you guys can start seeing. It's literally, he can only say and see what he did, does and hears. He, it's an image and a reflection of the truth over and over again. But right here, it says, Does not Hokma call and comprehension lift up her voice? On the top of the heights along the way, between the paths she has taken her stand. Beside the gates leading to the city, at the entrances she shouts, Men I call to you, and my voice is to the sons of Adam. You simple ones comprehend insight, and you fools be of a comprehending heart. Shema, listen, 
for I speak noble words, and the opening of my lips is about straightness. For my mouth speaks truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. Sir Mashiach speaking. None of them twisted or crooked. All of them plain to him who comprehends, and straight to those who find knowledge. Truth in the mind. His word in your mind. Accept my discipline and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For chokmah is better than rubies, and all delights are not comparable to her. This word for discipline is the same word that you have for his judgments or his chastisements that he's going to bring upon the children for not listening. If they will not hear, then he's going to do these things to him. And seven times more and seven times more. You see it in Leviticus, I think it's 26, and Deuteronomy 28, or it could be the other way around there. I, Hokma, have dwelt with insight, and I find knowledge foresight. The fear of Yahuwah is to hate evil. I have hated pride and arrogance, and the evil way, and the perverse mouth. Counsel is mine, and sound intelligence. I am comprehension. Mightiness is mine. By me kings reign, and rulers make righteous decrees. By me, princes rule, and nobles, all the righteous judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who earnestly seek me do find me. Riches and esteem are with me, enduring wealth and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold and fine gold, and my incense than choice silver. I walk in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of right, paths of right ruling, to bestow substance on those who love me, and to fill their treasuries. Yahuwah possessed me, the beginning of his way, as the first of his works of old. I was set up, anointed, poured out ages ago, at the first, before the earth ever was. This word, when I first read it, it was different in the in what they call the um, Hallelujah Scriptures. It was different in that version than it was in the um, ISR that I was familiar with. The Institute for Scripture Research, which is very similar, but not completely identical. It had set up, and the other one had anointed or, or poured out one of the two, and I was curious about why there was such a discrepancy. So I looked at the word in the Hebrew, and it's really amazing. It's actually to be set up or anointed, to be poured out like a libation offering. And this is what happened to Yahushua before anything was ever made. He knew all that would happen to him, and he willingly did it. That's why it says that he was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Okay? Free will and full consent. He says, I was set up ages ago. I was set up, anointed, or poured out ages ago at the first before the earth ever was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs heavy with water. Before mountains were sunk, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth and the fields or the first dust of the world. When he prepared the Shamayim, I was there. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep. When he set the clouds above. When he made the fountains of the deep strong. When he gave to the sea its law so that the waters would not transgress his mouth. When he inscribed the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him, a master workman. I was his daily delight. This is quoted in Gad the Seer, chapter 1, with the vision that Gad had, and he sees 
in the Ruach, our Mashiach, who's the man dressed in linen, and the father talking to him, saying, haven't you been my daily delight? And no one, no other created thing is like you, determining that he's different from the father who was, who is like you among all things, right? When he was only really equated to all created beings. But continuing, rejoicing before him all the time, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and my delights were with the sons of Adam. And now hearken to me, you children, or Shema, listen to me, you children. For Ashrei, that means prosperous, happy, confirmed, authenticated, walking straight, and blessed. Ashrei are they who guard my ways, listen to discipline, and become wise, and do not refuse it. Ashrei is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me shall find life and obtain favor from Yahuwah. But he who sins against me injures himself. All who hate me love death. And for anyone's peace of mind to know for certain that this is the Ruach, speaking in the voice of our Mashiach, and it's about him, you just keep in mind what he said, that the words that he spoke, that he speaks is Ruach and life, and the Ruach leads you into all truth and only says what he says. It brings forth his words. On top of that, in what is called the Apostolic Constitutions, when it's going over the festivals and it's at the end of that section, elucidating or enlightening us about all the all the times our Mashiach appeared to men throughout the original covenant. It quotes this as him in his person that Shalomo was speaking through when he gave it. And then it also quotes a psalm about the 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 righteous prince going in meekness and righteousness that's Dawid had sung concerning the beloved. It literally says in the psalm, for or by David, if you will, in the English, but they have that as comprehending concerning then the beloved. And every one of those psalms that say by David is the literal first person account of our Mashiach and what he's doing. So something to keep in mind when you're reading those. And when you read that in that light, also know that we are his body, and that's a representative as he being the head. These things will also happen or apply to you in that capacity, which is what has been appealing to the Psalms, the entirety of uh, the history man have studied them. And in one of the letters, I think it's a letter of, of Athenaeus on the interpretation of the Psalms, they go into detail expounding that on that stuff. It's pretty amazing. Although that man in general, I can't recommend, but that work is something that he quoted from another. And you can just read it if you want and test it for yourself, which is what I encourage everyone to do. All right, continuing here, it says Yahukanon 8, 12 through 59. Therefore, Yahushua spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall by no means walk in darkness, but possess the light of life. This same allusion is in Psalm 19, where it says that the son is like the bridegroom. And then when you line up the parable in the creation account with his 22 works throughout history, the sun, moon, and stars in the, the fourth day, is representative of our Mashiach, fully revealed, bringing the kingdom, which the moon lining up with the kingdom, we went over in great detail in Gad the Seer chapter one when we did that Shabbat study. There is references to it all the way from Genesis, the Testaments of Naphtali, the Psalms, the book of Gad the Seer, and elsewhere that show the kingdom both the earthly kingdom that's tied to the seed of Dawid and the Shamayim kingdom are representative in the moon. Okay. And then the children of light 
are are the stars and that was set up or established on the fourth day which is when time started counting the calendar began then and our Mashiach himself said before i came they had no sin now that i have come they have no excuse for it meaning now it counts that whole thing kind of plays together <clears throat> It says, the Pharisees therefore said to him, you bear witness about yourself. Your witness is not true. We know that if he's the word, this is how we establish it. Okay. Yahushua answered and said to them, even if I witness concerning myself, my witness is true. For I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. But you do not know where you come from, or from where I come, or where I go. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. But even if I do judge, my judgment is true, because I am not alone, but I and the Father who sent me. Okay? That's the importance of the word. He's not personally trying to condemn or judge anyone. But even if he judges you because you're convicted for your wicked works for what you're doing, it's because he's with the Father. The two are one in this. He only came to establish the Father's will. That's the two witnesses that make the word legitimate. And it was proved by the works that he came to do. Saying, even if you don't believe my words, believe the works. Believe me because of the works that I do. Opening the eyes of the blind, healing the sick, the literal benefits that the word brings, the restoration to life and well-being, that hearing and doing what the word says brings. All of that parables in his real life, if you can just see it. He says, but I am the father who sent me, and in your Torah also it has been written that the witness of two men is true. I am one who witnesses concerning myself, and the Father who sent me witnesses concerning me. Therefore they said to him, Where is your father? Yahushua answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know you, you would have known my father also, because of what we already read. No one knows a father but the son, no one knows a son but the father, and no one knows them but whom the Son is pleased to reveal them to. Right? These Yahushua spoke in the treasury, teaching in the set-apart place, and no one laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. Therefore Yahushua said to them again, I am going away, and you shall seek me, and you shall die in your sin. And where I go, you are unable to come. Then the Yahudim said, Shall he kill himself? Because he says, Where I go, you are unable to come. And he said to them, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore I said to the, you that you shall die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, and you shall die in your sins, that I am he, in the same place where it mentions the man in Lenin, and it has our Mashiach identified as that one in Gad the seer, who is, is the father's daily delight, he tells him in there that he is Ahie Asher Ahie. Or he is the Ahia Ashar Ahia, the I am that which I am, the one, the messenger in the cloud that spoke to Moshe, whom he took off his shoes and worshipped, was our Mashiach. That was the same one that was appearing as the prince of the, the hosts of the armies of Yahuwah to Yahushua, the son of Nun. And he himself took off his slippers and bowed down and worshipped him. That is our Mashiach, and he is the one who said he is the Ahie Asher Ahie, and furthermore, his name is Yahuwah for all generations. Just for context, we later learn, or we learn previously, that he inherits that name from his father. 
But to continue, it says, Then they said to him, Who are you? And Yahushua said to them, Altogether that which I even say to you. He hasn't been, he's been plainly telling these things, but they just don't get it because scripture says that we are, we are deluded by our own willing inequity. Our own willing sin causes us to be clouded in our judgment. We give jurisdiction to the unclean ruach or spirit, if you will. And one of the manifestations of it is spiritual stupidity to be slack or slothful in searching out things of righteousness it says i have much to say and to judge concerning you but he who sent me is true and what i have heard from him these i speak to the world they did not know that he spoke to them of the father so yahushua said to them when you lift up the son of adam then you shall know that I am, or I am he, and that I do none at all above myself. But as the Father taught me, these I speak, and he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. And that is the condition to which we will always have him with us when we walk in love. As he was speaking these words, many believed in him. So Yahushua said to those Yahudim who believed him, If you stay in my word, you are truly my taught ones. Not if you go read a dozen or other books that talk about it, but just stay in his word, right? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But this self-determining what it is, you can't have anyone, and that includes me, tell you this is what his word means. You have to take it for what it says. And I try, I'm willing, I try to tell you what it says and where you can find it and read it for yourself, right? <clears throat> they answered him, we are the seed of Abraham and have been servants to no one at any time. How do you say you shall become free? Yahushua answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone doing sin is a slave of sin, and a slave does not stay in the house forever. A son stays forever. If then the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are the seed of Abraham. They are literally the seed of Abraham. But you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen from with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Yahushua said to them, If you were Abraham's children, different from the seed here, but if he was their father, if you were his children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has spoken to you the truth which I heard from Elohim. Abraham did not do this. Genesis 18. He saw three men. One of them he bowed down to and called Yahuwah. He listened to what that man had heard from Elohim and did not seek to kill him, but on the contrary, begged him to stay, washed his feet, offered him a meal, treated him with kindness and hospitality. He says, you do the works of your father. That's the contrast there. A lot of people might not get that. Then they said to him, we were not born of whoring. We have one father, Elohim. Yahushua said to them, If Elohim were your father, you would love me, for I came forth from Elohim and am here, for I have not come of myself, but he sent me. A word shall go forth from my mouth and shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish all that I sent it for. Remember, that was a foretelling 
about this. Why do you not know what I say? Because you are unable to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you desire to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and has not stood in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks the lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Who of you proves me wrong concerning sin? And if I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of Elohim hears the words of Elohim. Therefore you do not hear because you are not of Elohim. The Yahudim answered and said to him, Do we not say well that you are a, a Shemarini or a Samaritan and have a demon? So you see, he's, he's telling them very truthfully, you can't comprehend what I'm saying because you do the things that the devil desires you to do. He's your father because you're obedient to him. You have to do the will of the Father to comprehend the truth. That's that's plainly said elsewhere, but he's trying to tell them right here too. <clears throat> Yahushua answered, I do not have a demon, but I value my Father, and you do not value me. And I do not seek my own esteem. There is one who is seeking and is judging. Amen, amen, I say to you, if anyone guards my word, he shall never see death at all. He says in another one, everyone who hears my word in, in living shall never taste death at all. Twice he mentions this, and people might not be aware, but we actually have the account in Genesis, Bereshit, where Hanok pleased Elohim, and walked with him and was no more amongst men. It's expounded on more in the book of Yobelim, the book of Hanok, and other places. But because of his obedience to the, to the truth that was given, he was taken to paradise. His heart's desire was given to him. He was literally shown all things in creation, how everything worked, all the luminaries top down and everything in between. He wrote it down and gave it to his posterity, and then he was paraded into paradise where he has the honor of living until the consummations of the times, and he's literally recording the deeds of his children through posterity, shameful as we've been. He is not the only one. We also have Eliyahu, who is taken in a fiery chariot. That's in the common scriptures. Outside of those, in the book of Hanok, it mentions in the animal apocalypse that Eliyahu was taken to where Hanok was. And in Yobelim, we find that he was taken to paradise. Other witnesses for those are in 2nd Baruch, where Baruch himself, a partaker of the southern kingdom and living and foretelling during the times where it was taken into captivity. He was told that his life would be preserved to him in every place where he was sent and that he would be taken to the consummation of the times. Other than those ones, we have also Ezra in 4th Ezra, who's told because of his disposition and things he was doing, that he likewise would be taken and live forever and never taste death. This very promise our Mashiach said while he was here, and then we have that very example or also given in the Shepherd of Hermas, where the persecutions that were going to happen with the reign of Vespasian, Titus, and Domitian, or I'm sorry, that had already happened. The uh, 70 AD had been passed. The destruction and persecutions that were coming with the reign of Domitian around 90 AD, when Yahukanon was banished to Patmos and wrote Revelation. Before that happened was when this vision was given. And it was enjoined for everyone that whoever was perfect and perfectly obeyed his will would perfectly be taken from all harm. So that same promise is there. And you can see it again in Revelation 
the ones that are remaining when our Mashiach returns are those that will never taste death, that are made like the messengers the second death will have no power over. They, without exception, will have to have the same heart and obedience and condition of mind as the men that have been kept from, from their generations because our creator is not partial in anything. But this is literally true. Everything in his word is literally true. You, you, he cannot be contrary to what he said. And you can find the evidence in the other, in the hidden writings that aren't readily available or aren't currently popularly studied. The Yahudim said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, and the foretellers. And you say, If anyone guards my word, he shall never taste death at all. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the foretellers died. Whom do you make yourself? Now, they asked him, you know, are you greater than Abraham? And listen to his answer, but they just can't comprehend it. Yahushua answered, if I esteem myself, my esteem is none at all. It is my father who honors me or esteems me of whom you say that he is your Elohim. Alluding to Chokmah Shalomo, or the Wisdom of Solomon, chapters, what is that, 1 and 2, where he would call himself the son of Elohim, and they would try him and see if he'd be patient and meek while they persecute and kill him. It was all foretold back then, over a thousand years before he came. It says, and you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I guard his word. Your father Abraham was glad that he should see my day, and he saw it and did rejoice. Genesis 18 and 19. The Yahudim, therefore, and I'm not just quoting this because I want you to take my word for it, this right here is quoted as mentioning our Mashiach's appearance to Abraham in the Apostolic Constitutions by Irenaeus and others of the Renewed Covenant believers. And we have a legitimate chain of, of a chain of authority, if you will. We've covered this before in greater detail, but just for anyone who might not be familiar, in the original covenant writings, all that is written can be summed up in Moshe saying, I've given you this stuff, guard it, and there's one coming that you need to listen to. If you don't, you're going to be cut off. He's going to be like me in everything. That one was our Mashiach. Our Mashiach sent out his 12 and then the 72, his taught ones, the ones that were approved and continued in the truth. And he said, anyone who doesn't listen to you is rejecting me and anyone rejecting me is rejecting my father it's better for sodom and gomorrah in the day of judgment than it will be for those people so the legitimacy of the book of acts all the epistles the writings of the emissaries to regard them is something that is important they themselves establish what is called the apostolic constitutions it's in their own right it's in their own words each of them naming themselves as they quote different things and it was written by Clement, if you read these, they literally tell you they set up the assemblies and they anointed through unanimous consent of the governed, they anointed overseers and members of the body in positions everywhere they went. And they said, anyone who won't listen to them, cut off. Irenaeus is one of those that was anointed and made an overseer in a direct line he was taught by Polycarp. Polycarp and, and Ignatius were taught by Yahukanon. So you can follow these tracks. And those are the ones I say, by all means, read them, prove them, and then hold fast to what's good. But anything that's outside of that chain of command, I don't, I don't say that you should have any regard for until you're familiar with what is in it. That's my personal opinion on that fact. It tends to be backed up by what we're reading right here. What I did not mention, and I'm just going to tell you now, there's a section in 
the book of Hanok that also foretells about the writing of many books and how men would go perverted for it. If you keep in mind the, the facts of history, Noah was given rules for his children. It was slow, shortly after that with the Nimrod, the Tower of Babel, making kingdoms and establishing man's law or a different set of instructions to abide by. And some of the oldest quote unquote laws of men from Babylon or Assyria right there come from the the law of Hammurabi, which is um, pretty atrocious, you know, talking about some superstitions and things, proving men by having them tortured, if you will. And that's all part of Babylonian municipal code, the way that, that works contrary to the, the common law. But that's for another time. So, Ab willing, you can see literally how all of this ties together. We're living out the events of his word in our own lives too, but most people don't see it because we've been so far uh, down, the, down the stream of history and with the uh, arrival of technology and so many distractions, people don't study this stuff anymore. Right here, it says, The Yahudim, therefore, said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Because he said that he saw his day and rejoiced. Yahushua said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Before Abraham came to be, Ahia, I am. Right? He's telling them right there who he was. And that's why they tried to stone him. Okay? Therefore, they picked up stones to throw at him. But Yahushua was hidden and went out from of the set-apart place, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Now, I want you guys to be mindful. The word can be plainly spoken to you. You can come to him for inquiry. You can seek the word of his mouth and hear what he has to say. But if you're not, if your heart isn't right, if you come to him, if your time of visitation is when you have the Ruach of Satan in you, it is not going to end well. This has gone over in very great detail in a, in a work called The Two Spirits, or The Two Ruach Oath, if you will. It's, um, I believe it is part of the exhortation at the beginning of what is called the Damascus Document. If you read that, it goes over what will happen to you when he visits, depending on what spirit or ruach is in you at that time. And when you read through those lists and then you read through the good news, you'll see why some were healed and had benefit and some did not. And it all has to do with the heart condition that the Father knows and is in full control of how you comprehend these things. Very important. Yahukanon 7. 37 through 39. And on the last day, the great day of the festival, Yahushua stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me, and let him who believes in me drink. As the scripture said, out of his innermost shall flow rivers of living water. Mentioned also by Sirach in Ecclesiasticus. He tried to get a little drink from the stream and to be having a a little bit of the water in his own cistern and it became a river and a felt sorry a fountain and then a river and a flood an ocean if you will that he had felt incumbent to share to others he says and this he said concerning the ruach which those believing in him were about to receive for the set apart ruach was not yet given because Yahushua was not yet esteemed. Yeshiyahu 55, 1 through 13. O everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no silver, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without silver and without price. If anyone's trying to sell merchandise as the word of Elohim, for their own benefit or profit, that's not without silver and without price. It's, that is that is selling the word of Elohim for gain 
which is something that's directly spoken against. I don't want to go into more detail about that, but you have to discern these things. If you try to listen to a gentleman or a man or a woman, or uh, I'm not going to get into the, the details on that, but if you try to listen to someone who is not doing things the way he said to, if they revile men and sell this stuff for money, you can be assured they don't have the truth. No matter how how clever it might sound, it's perverted. Why do you weigh out silver for what is not bread and your labor for what does not satisfy? Shema, listen to me and eat what is tov and let your inner being delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me, the word, hear so that your soul lives and let me make an everlasting covenant with you, the trustworthy loving kindness of beloved. See, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. See, a nation you do not know shall call you, and a nation who does not know you run to you. Because of Yahuwah your Elohim, the Kadosh Yisrael, for he has adorned you. Seek Yahuwah while he is to be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wrong forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to Yahuwah who has compassion on him and to our Elohim, for he pardons much. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, or neither are your ways my ways, declares Yahuwah. For as the Shamayim are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. He mentions in Yobelim chapter 1 that all of this stuff's going to happen, and then we're going to know that he's more righteous than we are. Because he's literally done what he said he would do. He's kept his end when we've continually failed him. It says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from the Shamayim, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth in bud, and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so my word that goes forth from my mouth. This is what the Father said. This is what the Mashiach said. It is true. It's what Yahuwah said. It's the truth in, in both regards. The word out of the mouth, the bosom from the Father is our Mashiach. The word of his mouth is the Ruach, which does the thing that he says. In exact image. Okay, he is the completeness of Elohim bodily. The exact representation of the invisible. If you can see it. He can only do what he sees. He only says what he hears. Just, we've mentioned this before, in the missing chapters of book three from the Recognitions of Clement that is only found in the Syriac version, he describes the differences between the Father, the Son, and the Ruach. He goes over the facts of who they are in, in relation to one another and absolutely refutes the Trinity which is why that was not translated out of the Greek and Latin into English for believers to see. But in there, Kepha says that as the Father exists, right, so the Mashiach is, just like as the substance of a body produces a shadow, so much more the fact that the self-existent one who does not come into being exists so he produced the Mashiach. And he is that's the type you can see from him. While he has free will, because he's we're made in his image, he freely submitted to his father. He only does his will. And because of that, he's given the reward of being in the position he is. And it is the example set forth, the the banner over us, if you will that we can see the standard that we can look to or the example we can follow, right? And that's why he's told us, if you follow me, you will sit on my throne with me. 
For as the rain comes down and the snows from the Shamayim and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth in bud and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It does not return to me void, but it shall do what I desire and shall certainly accomplish what I sent it for. For with joy you go out, and with shalom you are brought in. They go out to preach the good news, and with shalom we're, we will be brought in. The mountains and the hills break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field clap the hands. Instead of thorns, the cypress comes up, and instead of the nettle, the myrtle comes up, and it shall be to Yahuwah for a name, for an everlasting sign, which is not cut off. The thorn and the, the nettle, the thorn and thistle, the problems and things in the world caused by men instead of being wise counsel and fruitful trees. There's the picture there. Yahukinon 15 chapter or verse 1 through 27 and we might have to stop that one after this we'll check it says i am the true vine and my father is the gardener every branch in me that bears no fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes so that it bears more fruit you are already clean because of the word which i have spoken to you stay in me the Torah, and I stay in you. As the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself unless it stays in the vine, so neither you unless you stay in me. The word. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. And because without me you are able to do naught, if anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you stay in me, and my words stay in you, you shall ask whatever you desire, and it shall be done for you. In this, in answered prayers to obedient believers, my Father is esteemed right? That you bear much fruit and you shall be my taught ones. Sorry. I'm sorry. His father's esteemed in that, in us bearing much fruit, which is the point. But here, we've mentioned that before. If we stay in him and his words stay in us, we will ask for things that he will accomplish. It is the truth. I can witness this in my own life. I've literally had answered prayers. Others on our fellowship have literally had answered prayers. We've had prayers that have been answered for others and for ourselves. So it, it is true. And that doesn't mean that we're perfect. It doesn't mean we're not sinning or we haven't fallen or, or stumbled here and there. The righteous man stumbles seven times and rises, but the wicked, or sorry, the righteous falls seven times and rises, but the wicked stumble into evil, meaning they don't repent. Once they fall, they don't turn from it. All right. It says, as my father has loved me, I have also loved you. Stay in my love. If you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love, even as I have guarded my father's commands and stay in his love. These I have spoken to you so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. It says in the Apostolic Constitutions that true joy only comes by taking hold of the truth from out of the Shamayim and knowing that you have an eternal expectation. So if you, if you, with a reasonable mind, if you know you are doing the thing he said to from the heart, that's what can bring true joy in you. There is no other, everything else is fleeting. It says, this is my command that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. 
No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all which I heard from my father I have made known to you. Kepha says that he's taught, Yahushua has given us what he's determined man requires to know. We don't have to go beyond what is written. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he might give you. These I command you so that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, for that reason the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they shall persecute you too. If they have guarded my word, they would have guard or they would guard yours too. But all this they shall do to you because of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin, meaning time started to count. For he who hates me hates my father as well. If I did not do among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have both seen and have hated both me and my father. Meaning, the manifestations of power is his father's witness of him. This is what he's trying to say to prove and the reason why they're not forgiven because they hate him after he's shown him these things and done good works. They're literally returning evil for good. All right. They're literally violating the precepts of the Torah. And you can go through the right rulings right there. I believe it's chapters 21 through 23. There's one list that you can go down and then you can read what happens during his passion. It's like violated, 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 violated. Right down the list. It's horrible. But it's what happens when you're not walking in him. It says, if I did not do among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have both seen and have hated both me and my father, but that the word might be filled which was written in their Torah, they hated me without a cause. And when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Ruach of the Truth, who comes from the Father, it should say she, because the Ruach is given as wisdom and known as a she throughout the original covenant, the only reason why it's called a he in the renewed covenant is because spiritus is Latin and it's a masculine word. Ruach is feminine. It says, she shall bear witness of me, but you also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. All right. And then we might have to stop there for the... the Shabbat and continue. We gotta get a get a roll call here and see what we're doing. So just one more. All right. So yeah, it's a little late for us right here. We'll probably wrap up and if everyone wants to on our fellowship, we'll finish going through the rest of this PDF or this note that will be a PDF tomorrow or <laughs> next week. I'm sorry. And we'll continue. But ob willing, this is edifying for everyone. If you keep in mind the intentions of everything that we're covering is who we should listen to and how we determine the truth. Primarily, through this one that we've read, his word is to be listened to. Above all things, we should seek the truth from the word himself and then how he gave it to his taught ones, which is what we covered last week and what we'll finish up with next week if everyone wants to. So until then, you have a wonderful Shabbat, a great week ahead. Shabbat Tov, and we'll see you next time.